Jackie Jones. Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Starring Richard Crane. When we last saw Rocky Jones, he had safely escorted the ambassadors to the Interplanet Conference on Space Station X-07. But after Rocky left, uninvited guests from the outlaw planet of Ophetius had arrived unexpectedly. You know, Rocky, when Secretary Drake told us to take the ambassadors to the Interplanet Peace Conference, he made it sound as if we'd have all kinds of trouble. This has been the most uneventful flight we've ever had. Don't give away a rabbit's foot, Winky. Of course, if you hadn't caught Duveen trying to sabotage the ship before blastoff, it might not have been so uneventful. Which only proves that somebody's not happy about this peace conference taking place. There's still plenty of time for that somebody to make trouble, whoever that somebody is. But how? We just left Dr. Tyson and the ambassadors at the space station. Nothing can happen to them there. I hope you're right, Winky. Of course I'm right. I congratulate you on your wise decision to guide our spaceship safely in. Now you'll all sit down, and I'll brief you on your immediate future. Place your hands on the table in plain sight. We've no intention of doing anything foolish. You continue to be wise, Dr. Tyson. Who are you? And what do you want? Wise, but very inquisitive. I'll do the talking. You sit. You'll regret this action when Rocky Jones finds out about this. Rocky Jones? <laughs> He should just about be landing at Paratena. Three hours away. Sit. Sit! We should be close to Paratene. Uh -huh. Vina, Bobby, forward. Are we on course, Vina? Exactly. I just checked. She's right. I double checked. Well, we're really flying well equipped. It's not every spaceship that has two navigators. According to my calculations, we should be close enough to make contact and pick up Paratene on the visiograph. All right, let's try it. Ah, good old Paratene. There she is. XV-2 calling Space Ranger Legation on Paratene. Come in. Space Ranger Legation. Lieutenant Borden speaking. Hello, XB2. Hello, Borden. This is Rocky Jones and crew of the Orbit Jet requesting landing instructions. You're approaching our ellipse now. As soon as you're in it, I'll take over. Good. Any messages for us? No, sir. Expecting something? No. Just wanted. Out. Out. Well, no news is good news, I guess. Oh, everything's fine, Rocky. You're just tired. A good rest and you'll quit worrying. Just the same. I'm calling Dr. Tyson as soon as we land. Now that I've explained myself, obey my orders and no one will be hurt. My men will escort you to our spaceship. Move! Operator. Set the magnetic controls for our takeoff, then proceed to the ship the others. Pandu, better go along with him so he does it. Wait a minute. Could be Rocky Jones calling from Parity. Don't answer it. I don't intend to answer, stupid. But I better be answered. You talk as if nothing was wrong. This is Andrews, Space Station X-07. Come in. Andrews, Rocky. Just arrived on Paratane. How's everything going? Fine, Rocky. Just fine. Dr. Tyson's here. Oh, good. Let me talk to him. This is Dr. Tyson, Rocky. 
Everything going well, sir? Everything's going very well, Rocky. I hope I didn't interrupt anything. No, you didn't, Rocky. The orbit jet's being refueled, and if you need us, sir, we're at the Space Ranger legation. I'm sure I won't need you, Rocky. So we'll see you as we planned in 24 hours. Out. Out. Well, Rocky, old Winky's gonna dive into Paratane's social swim. I'll see you when we leave to pick up Dr. Tyson in 24 hours. Have fun, Winky. Right. 24 hours? Hey, what'd he say? He said everything was fine. No, 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 that, that, that 24 hour stuff. He just said, I'll see you in 24 hours. Say, that's right, he did. We agreed on 72 hours. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I haven't had one honest to goodness vacation since I've been your co-pilot. Something always goes wrong. Winky, I think that was deliberate. Dr. Tyson isn't a man who forgets things. He must have had a reason for saying 24 hours. Well, I've got a good reason for wanting to make sure. Look, Dr. Tyson's a very busy man. He has lots of things on his mind. Why don't you call him back and find out? Maybe he got mixed up. You know, I can't figure this thing out. Well, then call him back, Rocky. It'd, it'd be nonsense for us to go tearing back there and find out he'd made a mistake. Here. Rocky Jones calling Space Station X07. Come in, please. Rocky Jones calling Space Station X07. Come in, Andrews. Rocky Jones calling Andrews. Come in, X07. Well, it's no use, Rocky. The, the instruments are dead. Maybe. Or something's happened. Rocky Jones calling Space Affairs Headquarters. Secretary Drake, come in. Urgent. Secretary Drake speaking. Come in, Rocky. I'm calling from Paratane, sir. We just landed here for refueling. Then you left Dr. Tyson and the ambassadors safely at the space station. Well, that's what I'm calling about, sir. Rocky, what happened? Well, I've just tried to contact the space station and got no answer. Will you try it, sir? Maybe with the additional power you have there, you can get through. Right. Call you back. Out. Secretary Drake, Space Affairs Headquarters, calling Space Station X-07. Come in, Andrews. <laughs> Secretary Drake, Space Affairs Headquarters. Calling Space Station X-07. Come in, Andrews. Urgent. Secretary Drake, Space Affairs Headquarters. Calling Space Station X-07. Come in, Andrews. Urgent. Secretary Drake calling Paratane. Come in, Rocky Jones. Yes, sir. Blast off immediately for X-07. Augment your crew with three men from the Space Rangers Legation at Paratane. Be prepared for possible combat. Yes, sir. The ship's already refueled. We'll blast off as soon as we pick up the extra men. Out. Atlas and you did a great job. I think Cleo Lander should give you a platinum medal. You liked it, eh, Magni? Everything went off without a hitch. And having Dr. Tyson talk to Rocky was real fast thinking. Lucky call when he did, instead of after we left. I think I'll tell uh, Cleo Lander the good news. The Nalcavardi Governox. Atlasan calling you Nalcavardi Governox. Come in. Atlasan calling you Nalcavardi Governox. Come in. This is Cleo Lander. Do you have good news for me, Atlasan? Operation Surprise, successful. Atlasan, when you arrive in Ophetius, report to me immediately. I am giving you a very handsome reward. Well, thank you, Cleolata. Out. Magni, if I know the kind of reward our suzerain has in mind, you're looking at the future governor of Satellite 18. We're approaching the space station, Rocky. Turn on Visiograph, Winky. Yes, sir. Well, there it is. I wonder what'll happen when we get there. They must be able to see us by now, too. Maybe. 
Well, they're bound to have picked us up on radar, Vex. Suppose the station's been taken over and they suddenly start blasting us. That's the chance we'll have to take. When we get within firing range, we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, they better not try anything. That space station's a sitting duck for our missiles. XV-2 calling space station X-07. Put Dr. Tyson on at once. Answer. No answer. Maybe it's a trap, Rocky. I know something terrible's happened to Dr. Tyson. Fina, Bobby, go back to quarters. When we land, if we land, stay on board with the three space rangers till we know what's what. Tell them to be armed and stay on the alert. That's an order. Yes, sir. Hurry, Bobby. Winky, we're going in for a landing. Can we make it, Rocky, without the space station guiding us? We've got to. We'll use our tractor beam to guide us in. We can balance the ship against the magnetism of the space station. And let's go. Increase tractor beam. Roger. Tractor beam up, sir. Coupled, sir. Well, the whole space station's deserted. What do we do now, Rocky? I don't know. But we'd better think of something fast. Huh? Boy, they sure left here in a hurry. I'll call Secretary Drake. Get Vina and Bobby. Bring them to the control room. Right. But they can't just have disappeared into thin air. I think we both know what's happened, sir. And who's responsible for it? Yes. And this time she's gone too far. Then you agree it's clear, Lanta. Nobody else could invent such a bold, fiendish plot. But why, sir? What does she want with the ambassadors? It's her idea of revenge, because we have her two top men, Darganto and Griff, in jail, awaiting their trials. Darganto was her first in command, and Griff was the best spy she ever had on Earth. Yes, I remember she told us in no uncertain terms she'd get even if we proceeded with a trial. Any suggestions as to how we counteract Cleolanta's vicious maneuver? Yes. Well, why don't you see what you can find out from Dargando and Griff, sir? Maybe they'll drop a clue of some kind. Good idea, Rocky. I'll get right back to you. Out. Marshal, bring Dargando and Griff here immediately. Yes, sir. calling the landing base. Tell Aunt Lysanne to bring my guests to me immediately. Yes, clear, Lanta. I warn you, Darganto, and you, Griff, if you continue this silence, you'll receive absolutely no recommendations for mercy at your trials. You mean you promised us immunity if we talk? I mean I'd do everything in my power to mitigate your sentences. Very well. What do you want to know? Have you any information as to why Cleolanta would abduct the space ambassadors and hold them on officious? No. The thanks for the news. Get these men out of here. Put them in isolation and don't let anybody near them. Secretary Drake, never underestimate the power of our lovely suzerain Cleolanta. I knew she'd eventually get even with you for arresting us. Take them away. All right. Out.
Space Affairs Headquarters calling X-07. Come in, Rocky. Rocky, sir. Go ahead. Gargano and Griff claim they know nothing. I see. I think I should go to Ephesus and find out if Cleolanta's really behind all this. There's really nothing else for you to do, Rocky. Then we'll blast out immediately, sir. Leave Bobby and Dina there so we can relay messages to the space station. Right, sir. Out. Calling space station, X-07. Calling space station, X-07. Come in. Space station, X-07. Rocky Jones speaking. Come in. Rocky Jones. How nice to hear your voice. This is Cleolanta. All right, Cleolanta. Let's have it. I'll come straight to the point, Rocky Jones. I'm holding your space ambassadors as my prisoners. Now listen carefully if you want to see them again. Here are my terms. You will deliver Dargato and Griff to me here at Ophetius, safely and immediately. When this is done, I will give in exchange my distinguished prisoners. Is this clear, Rocky Jones? Oh, yes, Cleolanta. Just as clear as it is treacherous. I consider it treacherous that Earth is holding two of my men to stand trial. Darganto and Griff committed crimes against the United Worlds. According to your laws, they committed crimes. According to my laws, they followed orders. I've stated my terms. If you refuse to accept them, I shall dispose of your ambassadors in exactly the same manner you dispose of Darganto and Griff. I'll expect your decision in one hour. Out. Well, you, you got a hand it to that Cleolanta. She's sure the queen of the underhand. What do we do now, Rocky? Oh. Space Station X-07 calling Space Affairs Headquarters. Secretary Drake, come in. Urgent. At least they're alive. It could be worse. Secretary Drake speaking. Come in. Rocky, sir. I've just been contacted by Cleolanta. Take the message on the scrambler, please. Rocky, we don't need an hour to decide. I don't need a scrambler to send a message. I don't care who hears this. Tell Cleolanta we'll carry out her treacherous exchange of prisoners, but we'll do it our way. We'll honor the exchange, Cleolanta. But first, I must be assured Dr. Tyson is there and safe. May I speak with him? Yes, Rocky, this is Dr. Tyson. It's good to hear your voice, sir. Are you all right? Well, outside of the fact that I'd rather be with you, I'm fine. That's the only good news we've had today. Now, let me talk to Cleolanta, please. Yes, Rocky. You've decided to accept my terms. Not quite. There will be no exceptions. There will be no exceptions as far as the prisoners are concerned. I'm stating this officially as relayed to me by Secretary Drake. The exchange will take place here, on the space station in neutral territory. I refuse this compromise. It's to be done my way or not at all. All right. Then prepare for action from the United Worlds. But that amounts to a declaration of war. I thought the United Worlds was interested only in peace. The United Worlds have been patient with you long enough. You'll agree to this compromise or suffer the consequences. Is that clear? The exchange of prisoners will take place on Space Station X-07. All right. Now, I'm to be in charge of the exchange. Very well. Darganto and Griff will be flown from Earth immediately. And they should arrive here in 36 hours. You ought to have your prisoners here at that time. In 36 hours. Everyone is to be unarmed during the exchange. Is that clear? How do I know you'll abide by these ridiculous conditions? We'll abide by them. If you double-cross me, Rocky Jones, you'll never return to Earth alive. I give you my word of honor. Can you do the same? Out. You sure let her have it. Rocky.
Rocky. I was real proud of you. Space Station X-07 calling Space Affairs Headquarters. Drake here. Come in, Rocky. Cleo Lata just accepted the terms. Without exception, sir. I'll send a spaceship with Darganto and Griff. They'll be on their way in an hour. Very good, sir. Job well done, Rocky. Thank you, sir. Out. Marshal, prepare spaceship XV-10 to escort Darganto and Griff. Yes, sir. <laughs> Secretary Drake, thanks for your hospitality on Earth. Get them aboard. You'll blast off at 0700 with the ambassadors. Rocky Jones demands an exchange of prisoners. Very well, we'll exchange prisoners. Rocky Jones demands no armament. Very well, we'll have no visible armament. Come closer. Dargano, you and Griff wait in here. Mikey, you stay here with them, in case they want anything. I'm going back to the control room and guiding the efficient spaceship. It's been almost 36 hours. They should be here any minute, if they come. They'll be here. I'm the most important officer Cleo Lant has ever had. She went to a lot of trouble to get me back and showed you up for the fools you really are. Winky. I could handle that mosquito with one hand. Rocky, tell him to shut up or I'll paste him one. Rocky, we've sighted a spaceship on the visiograph. Watch him, Wiki. And uh, no more arguments. Oh, this is a great day, Magni. Why? Bringing Dargado back to Cleolanta? That means you'll move back into second in command. That's exactly what Dargano's expecting, too. When I finish with this operation, Cleolana will be so pleased that she'll hand me another reward. You know something you're not telling me. Come in. X-07 to the Nautilus. Our magnetic coupler is guiding you. When you come in, proceed with your prisoners to the conference room. Immediately. Out. Just we make the exchange without any ceremony. Here are your men, Darganto and Griff. Over here. I'll take over Mir Atlasan. You return to the ship. You'll feel a little better after some rest. And I'll see that you get it. Sterek, take Darganto and Griff to the ship. I prefer to stay here. Stay if you like, but don't interfere. And now in fair exchange, we return our prisoners. Gentlemen, welcome home. Oh. Oh, the Rocky. Good to see you. How are you? Space Ranger, glad to see you. See you. Prisoners exchange is agreed, right? Yes. And convey my congratulations to Cleolanta for keeping her word. Atlas, what do you think you're doing? We're taking Dr. Tyson back to Ephesians. To stay. Well, I should have known Cleolanta couldn't keep an honorable agreement. Be 
with us next week, same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Ranger. Jones on space station X-07, he had successfully negotiated an exchange of prisoners with the outlaw planet of Ophetius. But there had been an unexpected turn of events. Atlas San, you can't get away with taking Dr. Tyson back to Ophetius. Secretary Drake warned Cleolanda. If she didn't abide by the terms of the prisoner exchange, the United Worlds would intervene. But we've abided by the terms. We agreed to exchange Darganto and Grip for all the space ambassadors. We've exchanged them all. Now we're taking Dr. Tyson back again. We also agreed to be unarmed. What are these, pea shooters? The agreement was everyone was to be unarmed during the exchange. During the exchange, we were unarmed. Atlas, then I warn you. What you're doing is grounds for armed intervention by the United Worlds. That's Cleolanta's business. I'm just following orders. Sterk? Yes, sir. Take Andrews, the operator, to the control room. Andrews, get over here. Set the magnetic controls for our takeoff. And Steric, after he finishes, tie him up. Big gun, little brain. Lady! Don't stop him, Atlasan. They all deserve a beating for what they did to me. Darganto, for the last time, will you keep out of this? You're afraid, Atlasan. Afraid of what Rocky Jones might do to you if Magni hits his little friend. Cleodana's orders were that no one was to be harmed. I assume she included you in that order, too. Dargato, you're free to go to the spaceship anytime you like. I think you should realize that taking me to Ephesus doesn't mean that I'll cooperate when I get there. You're wasting our time, Dr. Tyson. Remember this, Atlasan. I refuse to accept this fate, which I consider worse than death. Dr. Tyson, you... you look ill. There's nothing to worry about, Rocky. I promise you that. The magnetic controls are set, sir, and Andrews is secured. We can take off any time you're ready, sir. I'm attaching a time lock to this door. Three hours after we leave, the lock will automatically open, and you'll be free to do anything you please. By then, Dr. Tice will be in Cleolata's hand. Any questions? Yeah, just one. Tell me, what's the next to the lowest form of animal life? Stand back. Stand back! <laughs> Set for three hours. Yes, sir. Hurry up. Mandu, help him. Magni, you can't carry Dr. Tyson. Clear Lance said no one was to be harmed, didn't she? Yes, that's what Atlasan said. If something were to happen to Rocky and his friends, she'd blame Atlasan, wouldn't she? Yes. What do you mean? Griff, stand guard. What did you do? Turned off 
up the oxygen. You're with me in this, aren't you, Griff? All right. I'll swear that for Sam turned it off. It's all your fault. You made a blunder of the whole thing. My fault? I didn't come near him. Cleo Lanto will never believe that, especially when I tell her what happened. Come on, let's get back to Ophicius. Hondo, Steric, take the body of the ship. Are you out of your mind? If I don't take the body back, Cleo Lanto will never believe I captured him. Tyson's no good to her now. I'm taking over Atlasan. You've done enough damage. Get on the ship. I'm still in charge here, and I say Tyson's body goes with us. All right, take the body of the ship. That's an order, do you hear? Leave him here. Go to the ship, both of you. Don't you move or I'll shoot. That's for you. Drop that gun. Have you thrown in prison for this? You'll be lucky to be alive when I tell Cleo Landa how you blundered. Get on the ship. Go on. Gargato, don't you think you'd better turn the oxygen back on now? No. I want my case against Atlas Sand to be airtight. I'm sorry you've had to suffer this inconvenience, but since there's nothing at all we can do for three hours, we may as well relax. If I know you, Rocky, the word relax means nothing to you at a time like this. Maybe not, but to you it's an order. Starboard rockets. I don't. You look kind of strange, too. Well, I feel a little sluggish, but... Pina, ask Dr. Lulan if he's okay. Bonadu? No. No, Bonadu. He doesn't feel well, either. Rocky, what's happened? Bobby. Bobby, are you all right? I guess so, Rocky. You can't get a space ranger down for long. Good boy. Hey, Winky. 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 Huh? Put it. Wow. What hit me? A knife in the back. Gentlemen. They've 
They've cut off our oxygen supply. I'm going to have a look at that vent. Boys, move that back, will you? Uh, there's nothing circulating through here. Vina, got a fingernail file? No, Rocky, I left it on the ship. Wait a minute, my lipstick. Use the edge, it'll work just like a screwdriver. No good toolkit should be without a lipstick. So are though. I'm sure glad we've got an army engineer along. As soon as I get this off, maybe you'll take a look inside and tell me what you think. Sure thing. I can't see anything. I can't feel anything but a small tunnel. Here, let me have a look. This is a standard circulator. Well, what kind is that? It's a small tunnel, 18 inches square. Exactly the size of this vent opening. It runs continuously from here to the air generator and the moisture recovery section, which is probably two or three corridors away from here. If we could only get to it. Well, certainly no man can get through that tunnel. No man? Someone smaller than a man could. Yeah, 18 inches. Why, well, I'll even have room to wiggle. Bobby, are you sure you feel well enough to go in there? I'm okay, Rocky. All right. But keep calling to us as you go along. I think we'll be able to hear you. Come on, let's blast off. I'll give you a hand. The time's short, Bobby. But remember, don't get excited or try to hurry. You'll have to save your energy. Okay, Rocky. I'm on my way. Good luck, Space Ranger. Ah, uh, this is more like it, Griff. All those weeks in that prison cell on Earth. I knew Cleoland would get us out some way. I guess she thinks we're pretty important, huh? Atlas Sand will find out just how important. You've got a web spun around him he'll never get out of. <laughs> Sure can. Clear as a bell. No something, Rocky? What? I feel like a bull. Save your breath, Bobby. Rocky! Rocky! Yes, Bobby? I've come to the end. Good work, Bobby. Can you tell what it is? It's some small pipe with holes in them. Holes? Bobby, can you see through them? No, I put my finger in one. Rocky, he's there. Those pipes bring the oxygen from the tanks directly into the circulation tunnel. Bobby, you're there. Push it open. <laughs> Bobby, please push. Push hard. Oh, it's no use, Rocky. I can't do it. If Bobby could just make one good push, I know he'd get through. You're right, Rocky. Those small tunnel doors were not riveted on. They were made so they could be easily removed for repairing. Bobby, listen to me. Now that you've rested, try it again, will you? It's no use, Rocky. It's solid as a rock. I can't budge it. Come on. 
Bobby. Think of something. Use your head. Use my head. Use my head. I use my head. <laughs> nice going, Bobby. We're proud of you, Bobby. Now, turn on the master switch. Generator, condenser. Piston, master switch. Rocky, can you hear that? Ah, uh, sure can, Bobby. Now, do you think you can find your way back here and pick the lock on this door? I'll be right there. We didn't hear a thing. How did you open the door? By magic? Oh, this door is a cinch. But that other thing, it's good I'm hard-headed. <laughs> Bobby, we're very, very proud of you. You saved our lives, you know. Tell me, did the pipes push away from the tunnel opening? Yeah. You should have seen what my head had a push. That means we're not getting any circulation here. We better move to the control room. Andrews, he's still tied up. Let's go. Dr. Tyson is dead. Oh, no. This is all Claire Lana's fault. If she hadn't tried to take him to a fecius, this never would have happened. Winky, you and these men take Dr. Tyson's body to the ship. Yes, sir. We'll go to the control room and call Secretary Drake. How did you get out? I expected to be tied up for another three hours. Bobby crawled through the air tunnel. Is the astrophone working? I'll have to repair it. It won't take long. Hey. Wait a minute. He moved. Well, he did. I saw his eyes. They blinked. See? Winky, what's wrong? Well, it's it's Dr. Tyson. He he come on. his eyes. His heart's beating. Look. Dr. Tyson. Are you all right? Rocky. Let's get him to the control room. Yeah. 
Easy. I just can't believe this. You can't believe it. I thought I'd blacked out into useful consciousness. I'm sorry that I had to do this to you, but I didn't have a chance to tell anyone. Tell us what, sir? Well, it's really very simple. I took a suspended animation capsule. A what? A capsule that suspends animation temporarily stops all vital functions like the heart and the pulse. It's like drowning, Winky. Oh? My laboratory's been working with it for some time, but frankly, I, I didn't expect to test its effectiveness on myself. I'd like to see Cleolanta's face when she finds out you've tricked her. I'd like to tell that young woman what I think of her tactics. The first person we better tell is Secretary Drake. Yes. Is the astrophone working yet, Andrews? Try it out. Rocket Jones calling Space Affairs Headquarters. Come in. Space Station XO7 calling. Come in, Space Affairs Headquarters. Marshal speaking. Come in, Rocky. I have a very urgent report, Marshal. Take it on the scrambler, will you, please? Rocky, this is unbelievable. All I can say is we're relieved to hear from all of you. I'll report this to Secretary Drake right away. Hurry home, Rocky. Right, Marshal. Out. Gargano says one thing. Atlasan, you say another. But you're wasting your time trying to place the blame for Dr. Tyson's death. I'm holding you both responsible for what's happened. Cleolanda. You were valuable to me only because you carried out my orders unscrupulously. But when you start trying to trick me, you're no longer of any use. And you've made me the target of the United Worlds. For this, you shall pay very dearly. Yes? Oh, Cosman, come in. I've accomplished the impossible. Earth Scrambler code, I've broken it. Good work, Cosman. That's the only good news I've had today. And I've decoded our first intercepted message to Earth. Let me see. That's from Rocky Jones. Why, it can't be. Why not? Why, it hasn't been three hours since they were locked in. torture at my command that's worthy of you two. Dr. Tyson is alive. Alive, do you hear? Who turned off the oxygen? He did. What oxygen? Don't pretend, Atlas and I saw you do it and so did Griff. You stay out of this. That was a very foolish thing for you to do. Leonardo. He's framed this whole thing. Why did you think I made the blunder? Gentlemen! Since you're so anxious to get at each other's throats, I'll give you an opportunity to fight it out unmolested. Guard, take these officers and lock them up in a cell together. I'm sure after a couple of months in the same cell, you'll both see eye to eye.
top of your head still have a bump, Bobby? Like a goose egg. That ventilation shaft must have hurt. Steady she goes, Bobby. Rocky, are we close enough to Earth to talk with space headquarters there? Yes, Dr. Tyson. XV2 calling space headquarters. Come in. Space headquarters answering. Come in, XV2. Marshal here. It's Marshal. Secretary Drake's adjutant. Marshal, this is Dr. Tyson. Give my regards to Secretary Drake and tell him I'd like to talk with him when we get back about awarding special citations to the crew of the Orbit Jet. And that includes Bobby. I'll relay your message to Secretary Drake. Thank you, sir. Out. Be with us next week, same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Ranger.